Let the healing light of the sun burn out the darkness within you. Let your inner light be a guide for others, and a searing flame against unrepentant evil. A quote from The Birth of Light and Truth. The Dawnflower Goddess of healing, honesty, redemption, and the sun. Alignment is neutral good. Domains are fire, glory, good, healing, and the sun. Her favored weapon is, of course, her scimitar. Centers of worship are Absalom, Ketepesh, Osirion, Kodria, Taldor, and Thuvia. Her nationality is considered Kelishite. Serenre is one of the most popular deities on Golarion, and followers of many other faiths respect her power, dedication, and generosity. Once a powerful angel known as an imperial lord, Serenre led the heavenly hosts in the charge against the rough beast Rovagag, and it was she who dealt him the great blow that led to his chaining. Now a goddess in her own right, Serenre is a kind and loving figure, one of light, guidance, and healing, and has a great patience with those who choose to be blind but may one day see. Yet for all her compassion, Serenre is also a powerful force against evil, and strikes down the irredeemable without mercy. Her faith is an ancient one. It first became popular among Kelishite humans, then spread to Garundi in ancient Osirian, and into other human and non-human civilizations as well. Eons ago, Serenre was an angel, guiding the energies of the sun, and battling evil beings that sought to plunge the newborn world of Galarian and its sister planets into eternal darkness. Other angels lent her their support and turned to her for leadership in these battles. And eventually, gods joined them as she grew in power to become one of the mighty imperial lords. Serenre was the first to stand against Rovagag's attempts to unmake Galarian, and she faced the rough beast personally when the other forces of creation were engaged with his hideous spawn. The exact circumstances of the battle are a mysterious thing to mortals, but it is believed that her willingness to sacrifice herself for the good of all inspired her flagging comrades to new hope and encouragement, and elevated her from one of the greatest angels to a full goddess. With this influx of power, she smote Rovagog and hurled his broken body deep into the earth. As the gods healed the planet's scars and intelligent life appeared on its surface, mortals turned their eyes upward to thank the life-giving sun and her faith took root among primitive peoples. Serenre is a goddess of boundless love and exquisite kindness, a caring friend, mother, sister, and protector of all in need. She delights in healing the sick, lifting up the fallen, and shining a guiding light into the darkest hearts and lands. She brushes off insults and deflects attacks, patiently trying to convince those who perceive her as an enemy that their belief is false. For all her patience and gentleness, however, she is no victim. If it becomes clear that her efforts are wasted, she responds to violence and predations upon the innocent with cleansing fire and scorching light. She dislikes cruelty, lies, needless suffering, and thoughtless destruction. Ancient and timeless, she stands fearlessly against the full tide of darkness, promising that the dawn will always come, and with it, hope, truth, and kindness will triumph. The religious art depicts the sun goddess as a woman with bronze skin, and hair of dancing flame. In some cases, this flame trails behind her for a dozen or more yards. One of her hands offers the light of the sun, 
while the other wields a scimitar against those who would spread darkness, hatred, and bane. The Church does not teach that Serenay is the sun itself. Rather, she is its guardian and conduit for its power. And while fanciful art may show her face in place of the sun, the mainstream faithful recognize the difference between the star and the goddess. The Dawnflower's faith is a broad one, and the majority of her worshippers are everyday folk who recognize the power of the sun, take comfort in the idea of a deity's love and compassion, and believe strongly in both redemption and righteous action. Her faith attracts those with kind hearts who are nevertheless willing to harden them when kindness is a dangerous weakness. The faith makes few demands of its everyday adherents beyond these tenets, and its clergy are usually seen as valiant protectors and enlightened teachers. Serenay indicates her favor with sightings of doves, rays of dawn or dusk sunlight, that last far longer than they should, the discovery of yellow gems, stones, and the like, or the sudden soothing of aches and pains. Her displeasure is often seen as apparent, unexplained sunburns or periods of blindness that may last anywhere from a few moments for minor transgressions or to a lifetime for mortal sins. Her holy symbol is an ankh, though more stylized versions show a winged ankh or a female that is winged with arms outstretched and a halo of flame. Her titles include the dawn flower and the cleansing light, but her enemies sometimes call her the warrior of fire. During the Age of Enthronement, missionaries from the Padishah Empire of Kelish, where worship of Serenray is the state religion, began spreading their faith into the inner sea region, where it quickly took root. Today the Church of Serenray is common across the region, with good communication between temples and amiable relationships with most non-oppressive governments. The church is strongest than Absalom, Katapesh, Osirian, Kodira, Taldor, and Thuvia, in which great gold-adorned open-air temples rise tall and white into the skies, though the church is emphasis on kindness, healing, joy, and redemption make it popular across the continents, and shrined to the Dawnflower dot countrysides in most nations. The desert flavor imbued by the Kelishite origins remains noticeable in larger and more traditional temples, though smaller and more rural congregations often let the regional traditions and aesthetics shape their worship of the conception of the goddess. Services are joyous events incorporating singing and dancing accompanied by upbeat music. They always take place outside and during the daylight hours. The church is very supportive of marriage and a wedding in a temple is always cause for celebration. There is no stigma attached to divorce and the delight over a second and third marriage is just as heartfelt as for the person's first. Worshippers in many regions consecrate their vows every ten years. For Serenay Congregation, faith is not merely a theory, but an active force that underpins their actions. They try to see things in her light, which reveals the hope and potential for goodness in people they encounter. Serenay encourages her faithful to speak out and take stands for what is right, I practice that leads many to characterize Serenites as fiery zealots. In truth, however, the other half of Serenay's teachings 
that one should always seek to first understand and redeem foes rather than immediately write them off, means that while Serenites may be passionate and outspoken, their finely honed sense of right and wrong is tempered by compassion. As might be expected in a religion that teaches its followers to speak out and take action, not all Serenites agree on her teachings or even get along. The most prominent example of this is in Kodira, where a militant sect known as the Cult of the Dawnflower has risen to become a dominant faith. As tribal nomads say, there are no second chances in the desert, and the cult of the dawnflower has taken this moral to heart. These hard-edged priests offer mercy once and only once to their opponents, and if refused, they are ruthless in battle, ignoring offers to parley or surrender, and unafraid to judge neutral opponents as if they were black-hearted evildoers. This severe stance only applies to enemies of the faith and sinful folk among their friends, family, and respectable members of society. Members of the Cult of the Downflower are kind, generous, and forgiving. In a large part, the Cult of the Downflower has risen out of a close alliance between elements of the Kordiran government and certain temple leaders. Members of the Cult of the Dawnflower believe Taldor is in need of a cleansing with the blade and fire and continuing border tensions with Taldor are often exacerbated by members of the Cult. Never want to turn their back on a good deity, the nation of Taldor supports a number of temples devoted to Serenry. While the Cult of the Dawnflower tends to fall much closer to neutral than neutral good, its Spellcasters are never actually evil, as Serenray revokes her gifts from those who commit evil acts. Along with its relative bloodthirstiness, the cult of the Dawnflower differs ethnically from the larger church in that it tolerates slavery as long as slaves are not mistreated. Free folk can sell themselves into slavery for a span of years to pay off debts and provide for their families, and some habitual criminals are sentenced to a term of slavery to pay their debt to society. Temples are open to the sky, though larger temples may be enclosed buildings surrounding an open central courtyard where worship is held. Most hang large brass or gold mirrors in high points to reflect more sunlight toward the altar, though they are carefully positioned so as not to blind worshippers. Sun motifs are common decorations, as are white or metallic wings and images of doves. Most temples have a sundial, and golden decorations are often set against light blue silk hangings that evoke sunny skies. Sunflowers and other plants with large golden flowers surround many of Serenray's sanctuaries. In border communities, these sunflower seeds are often eaten, either whole or as a nutritious paste, or are dried and ground into flour to make bread. Believing in charity and supporting the community, churches often bake small loaves of filling nutritious bread marked with an unk on top, known as dawnflower bread, to distribute to the needy. Seren Ray has many shrines, typically a single stone marker with a sun unk, though trios of carved standing stones may mark the summer and winter solstices. Shrines may have niches for candles or small handwritten prayers, and visiting pilgrims typically scatter sunflower seeds at the base. In hotter lands, 
the sunstones might be part of a small shelter and have an overhang to create a bit of shade for weary travelers. Seven Ray's faith is one of kindness, healing, honesty, peace, and forgiveness. Her clergy believe wholeheartedly in redemption and are patient and compassionate in attempting to persuade evildoers to mend their ways. Hers is not a passive faith. The Dawnflower's servants teach that goodness is more than simply not doing harm. They see no point in punishment for its own sake. Loving kindness and acceptance draw those back to the path of goodness far more effectively than threats or pain, but they do not confuse patience with allowing evil to work its will unopposed. Force may be a last resort for a priest of Serenre, but when she draws her scimitar, her justice will be swift, implacable, and complete. Those who wage war in Serenre's name attempt to ensure that it is as clean as it can be, and that it ends quickly as possible. Serenre's acceptance of all who strive toward virtue attracts a diverse clergy. Clerics, inquisitors, rangers, sun druids, monks, and bards are common as any spellcaster and warrior who wield magic to defeat evil bring light and hope to the beleaguered, and aid sick, the poor, and the downtrodden. Her paladins tend to be adventure seekers, many of them searching out downtrodden innocents to defend or questing as penance for past failures or perceived flaws. Serenray's status as a full angel who's ascended to goddesshood makes her church an attractive choice for those with a celestial heritage, and clergy so blessed are often a source of pride to their congregations. The Church's message of redemption, for all who seek it, also makes it a compelling choice for those struggling to remain virtuous despite their fiendish blood. Whatever their origins and skills, these priests who devote their lives to serenary service seem rarely to sunburn, even if they have fire complexions, and they tend to tolerate heat easily, even if they hail from cold climates. Serenary's clergy are devoted to serving their communities, administering to their flocks with a gentle hand and wise words. They provide healing and counsel to those who need it, Listen to the confessions of those who wish to bear the wounds of their souls to Serenray's healing light, expose injustice where they find it, arbitrate disputes, and rehabilitate criminals. They promote law and order as long as it benefits everyone, but are not afraid to organize communities against unjust rulers. Priests view casual cruelty and thoughtlessness as genuinely harmful, and if they accidentally engage in one of these behaviors themselves, they seek out the wronged person and attempt to obtain his forgiveness. They understand that forgiveness and goodness take practice, and regular daily acts of kindness and virtue aid one in building the moral strength to do what is right when one's goodness is challenged in more serious ways. Such kindness vanishes, however, when the church is stirred to action against an evil that cannot be redeemed. At such times, Serenray's priests become dervishes, dancing among foes while their scimitars meet out final justice, and even lay worshippers may take up arms. Swordplay, particularly with the scimitar, is considered an art form among Serenray's priests, and martially minded priests obtain and train rigorously in its intricacies. The church sometimes uses spells such as Lesser Gius and Mark of Justice to help those that are malcontent toward a guide of goodness.
while they don't wish to take away free will, they aren't adverse to providing extra encouragement to help those to choose the correct path. Most non-adventuring priests live on donations from their congregations. Nobles and wealthy merchants sometimes sponsor priests or hire them as healers and protectors and peacekeepers. By tradition, most priests will not refuse someone in need of healing even if they are unable to pay. But they are quick to assess who urgently needs medical attention and who will recover naturally, which prevents most exploitation and allows priests to focus their magic on those who really need it. The Downflowers Church allows its priests a great deal of mobility between temples, a legacy of its early popularity among the nomadic tribes. This practice helps diffuse pressure from personal feuds as one priest can relocate to another temple until tempers cool. The head of a particular temple is called the Dawn Flower or Dawn Mother. Members of the temple are expected to follow the decisions of the leader, though normally she encourages input from junior members. Priests of Serenre are usually skilled at diplomacy and healing. Many also learn about nature and herbs to better understand medical plants and their uses. Those who make a habit of confronting evil usually learn how to intimidate such foes as they prefer for foes to surrender so they need not beat all their enemies into submission. A priest normally wakes around dawn and salutes the rising sun with a prayer to the goddess. A quick meal follows, as does a short period of introspective prayer, no longer than an hour, after which the priest goes about her work. Priests pause to pray for a few minutes when the sun reaches its highest point in the sky and again shortly before sundown. Priests who cannot see the sun, such as those in a dungeon or cave, estimate the appropriate time for these prayers. The paladins of the dawn flower are fiery warriors like their goddess. They provide hope to the weak and support the righteous. Their tenets include the following adages. I will protect my allies with my life. They are my light and my strength, as I am their light and their strength. We rise together. I will seek out and destroy the spawn of the rough beast, for I cannot defeat them. I will give my life trying. If my life would be wasted in the attempt, I will find allies. If any fall because of my inaction, their deaths lie on my soul, and I will atone for each. I am fair to others and expect nothing for myself but that which I need to survive. The best battle is the battle I win. If I die, I can no longer fight. I will fight fairly when the fight is fair, and I will strike quickly and without mercy when it is not. I will redeem the ignorant with my words and my actions. If they will not turn toward the light, I will redeem them by my sword. I will not abide evil and will combat it with steel when words are not enough. I do not flinch from my faith and do not fear embarrassment. My soul cannot be bought for all the stars in the sky. I will show the less fortunate the light of the dawnflower, and I will live my life as a mortal blade shining with the light of truth. Each day is another step toward perfection. I will not turn back into the dark. Seren Ray's faithful are united by their desire to make the world a better place. They believe wholeheartedly in redemption, yet 
This should not be mistaken for weakness. They are equal parts healers and crusaders, and seek to stand up to evil in all its myriad forms. Followers of Serenre may engage in relatively peaceful pursuits such as tending the sick, arbitrating disputes, and rehabilitating criminals, or they might hunt down abominations and bring justice to any unrepentant evildoers. Whatever drives them, the end result should be bringing the light or sword of Serenre to hearts that have been dark for too long. The one book of all the churches of Serenre is The Birth of Light and Truth. This ancient text includes stories that date back before Serenre's ascension to a true goddess, describing the creatures she faced and including a long list of fiends and horrors she destroyed long before mortals learn writing. The rest of the book is more practical than historical, explaining the beliefs of the church, offering advice on dealing with sin and temptation, and providing parables of evil creatures turning to the light of the dawn flower and living good, productive lives thereafter. The book also contains simple folk remedies for common illnesses and injuries, suggestions for dealing with undead and other evil creatures, and advice to aid those who wish to return to a virtuous path. Most copies contain extra pages for the owner to record his own experiences or uplifting stories he hears so that he can repeat them to others, and any copy containing a first-hand anecdote from a great priest or paladin is especially prized as a family or church heirloom. It is customary for a hero of the church who performs some great deed for a person or temple to write a brief account in or at least sign a local copies of the light and truth, as it is commonly known, as a memento and historical record. Serenre is the patron goddess of summer, and the high summer month of Serenith is named for her. The church has several universal holidays, though regional temples may hold additional holidays to celebrate local events such as the appearance of a saint. Burning Blades This holiday takes place on the tenth of Serenith, although technically it is the apex of a summer-long celebration in the Dawnflower's name. The holiday represents the light of Serenre and her power to heal both physical and spiritual injuries and malice. It is named for the Dance of the Burning Blades, a performance in which the faithful coat ceremonial weapons in slow-burning pitch and dance with them. Candlemark is a personal holiday for members of the faith, a remembrance of when and why they joined the church. By tradition it is held in the winter solstice, representing that even during the sun's darkest and weakest day, Serenre's power to heal and redeem is still with the faithful. In most human cultures, children may declare themselves members of the church on their first candlemark after their fifteenth birthday. How they celebrate it is a matter of personal choice. Some hold a feast, some go on pilgrimage, and some spend the day in prayer. This holiday is particularly meaningful to redeemed evil folk who have found forgiveness in the light of Serenry. Sunrot Festival The summer solstice celebration honors the longest day of the year. Worshippers dance, give each other small gifts, light fireworks, and sell or trade their finest crafts in a market-like gathering. Fireworks, paper streamers, and simple kites are popular amusements. Many celebrations feature a reenactment 
of the battle between Serenray and Rovagug, with the goddess represented by a young woman, and the evil god represented as a large frame and cloth costume that can extend twenty feet in length and require four or more people to operate. Serenray's faithful often swear oaths in her name to demonstrate their honesty, and certain phrases are also common. The dawn brings new light. Often used as a litany against evil and despair, this phrase assures the faithful that each day is a new opportunity and promise from Serenray that things get better, even if only in the afterlife. It is also used to welcome and bless good things in life, such as the birth of a child, an unexpected monetary gain, or a delicious meal. For the sun and the fury, this battle cry calls upon the light of Serenray and her righteous anger at unrepentant evil. Baladins like to shout it when they smite foes, and fiends and clerics trumpet it when they invoke holy fire. Traditionally, it is painted or carved on the cornerstones of temples to Serenray. The goddess is warm and welcoming toward all non-evil deities. She is also gracious to most of the evil ones, hoping to convince them to turn to the light, and none of them doubt that her honest desire is for their redemption, and even their friendship, whether or not they reciprocate that feeling. Though it is rare for either of them to speak of it, her rivalry with Asmodeus is passionate and goes far deeper than her constant battle with him for mortal souls. The Dawnflower restrained her disgust, for Urgothoa's actions in the interest of trying to find a way to help that deity become whole again. Only Rovagug and his mindless destruction are exempt from Serenray's generosity of spirit. She still remembers the stings of his attacks as she battled to imprison him ages ago. Once an imperial lord herself, she often lends others support in their causes and in some lands imperial lords are worshipped as saints of the Dawnflower's church, though Serenray herself makes no such claims. Serenray's faithful try to mirror her open-armed generosity of spirit and compassion, while they teach that redemption is rarely a swift process, and those who would worship her must learn to hold their tempers and patiently guide others to the path of righteousness. They deny only the followers of Rovagug the open hand of friendship, for to embrace and the nihilism of complete destruction is to reject the opportunity for salvation. Serenray's domain within Nirvana stands on the far edge of the Sea of No Shadows a crystal-clear inland ocean whose visibility extends down to its sandy bottom, perpetually illuminated by the brilliant golden light of the goddess's realm. Serenray's personal holdings are largely sealed except to partitioners, her divine servants, and the native celestials who are willingly serving her as a way of accomplishing shared goals. Even those who do not serve her treat her with great respect and admiration, for she was once an angel. To all others, her seat of power is simply an outline of golden watchtowers visible on the horizon, a sight tantalizingly out of reach to ships on the sea, regardless of how far they sail. Yet Serenray is not unwelcoming. In addition to her exclusive realm, 
the goddess also presides over the city of Hainan Subar, on the far side of the inland sea, perpetually drenched in the sunlight of its patron. The city is one of the largest in Nirvana, and is populated by mortal worshippers of the dawn flower and descendants of her worshippers from an ancient Kalishite nation destroyed by the spawn of Rovagug, known as the Terrorask. It does not bar entry to other faiths and remains popular place to buy and sell magical implements of healing. In addition to Serenray's servitor race, the Yoms, the following creatures are well-known supernatural servitors of the Dawnflower and are suitable for conjuring with planar ally and similar spells. Most straddle the line between holy warriors and bringers of divine mercy. Brela, unique half-celestial fire elemental. Appearing as a wheel of burning sunlight, this energetic and friendly angel watch over good folk, pilgrims, children, and cats, and relishes the opportunity for conversation. She usually manifests as a neutral good, large, half-celestial fire elemental with a fly speed of 50 feet and perfect maneuverability. Though she can shrink herself down to a tiny size and appear as a halo behind the head of the priest who summoned her. When negotiating payment for her services, she prefers sparkling gems, carved figurines of lions and other lion-shaped items, and hot pastries. Charlabu, Unique Hound Archon This golden-haired hound archon prefers to take the form of a friendly dog when interacting with mortals, and has been known to masquerade as a regular dog to look after people in need, though his alignment spoils the ruse for those who can detect such things. Mist Morning, an intelligent magic sword. Religious scholars debate whether Mist Morning is a celestial unicorn in the shape of a blade or a blade with the powers of a celestial unicorn. She always appears as a fine sword or scimitar inlaid with rose gold markings and set with two grey gems on its pommel. She rarely speaks and prefers to take a passive role as a weapon in the hands of a hero. Sun Lord Dalachos This angelic being serves as Serenray's herald. Before the Age of Lost Omens, he often delivered prophecies on behalf of Serenray, and several stories in the Birth of Light and Truth are penned by oracles whom he personally escorted through Serenray's realm. Now he appears at auspicious births, and the goddess of the sun has tasked him with standing orders to guard her realm against fiendish, particularly infernal, incursions, stop any who would attempt to free Rovagog from his prison, and defend against those who would tamper with the sun itself. Some chapters of Serenray's faith claim that Dalakos is a reborn every day. Certainly he has died in battle and appeared unharmed at later time, though there is insufficient evidence to answer whether he actually rises again at dawn. Some sects call him Saint Dalakos and explain that he was the first human priest of Serenre, though again there is no historical evidence for this claim, and the angel has never said he is every, anything more than an angel. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video on Saren Ray. Next, we're going to do Ioma Day. So stay tuned, and as always, have a great day, God bless, and enjoy.
This content was made possible by travelers and viewers like you. Thank you.